Hey, it's Maya. By the way, this is a really weird angle, but I really wanted to show my background. So you've probably seen it in one of our videos already, but as you can see, it's really, really pretty. So that's why I have it in this angle. But today, I actually have my hair in a bun because guess what? We're going to be making korokke, which is a Palawan dish. This is a really popular dish back home. Um, I, we all grew up eating it, my sister, myself, anyone from Palau basically probably like knows the recipe, uh, but I don't know the recipe. So I'm going to be calling my parents in a little bit, asking them what the recipe is. So it's going to be a mix of mine and theirs, <laughs> I guess. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and head into the kitchen. l and m sisters, like, comment, and subscribe. So in Palau, koroke is usually served with some rice. So first things first, I went ahead and prepped my rice. And just make sure to wash your grains two or three times to remove any excess starch left behind. Alright guys, so I am cutting the bangum right now. Slice the kangkum leaves into two inch pieces or whatever size you feel comfortable with. These ends are actually very hard, so if we put them in the koroke, it has to be really small. I have a container here. While going through the fridge, I actually found some leftover onions, so I went ahead and added those into the batter as well. So for my recipe, I am using this chunk like tuna, but normally in Palau growing up, our grandma would make the koroke with the sardines in a can or the makaril in a can. Other recipes call for crab meat, so definitely do whatever meat you are comfortable with using. To season, I'm using soy sauce, some Morton ionized salt, of course with the umbrella girl, and an egg. Now I am using this gold metal premium quality flour, you can definitely use whatever you have at home. Go ahead and just incorporate that with some water and until you get the right consistency for yourself. Of course with more flour equals a thicker koroke and less flour will be a thinner and more crunchy koroke. We grew up eating very thin and crispy koroke so I went ahead and added more water to hopefully yield the same results. This turned out pretty good. So I'm happy. So we have the vegetables vegetable koroke and then we have just a regular tuna with gangu so let me show you guys what we're working with so this is the tuna with gangu and then this one is the vegetable one so i'm excited to go ahead and fry that so let's start frying heat three to four cups of vegetable oil for deep frying So TBH I actually messed up by turning over the goroke too fast. All in all, I actually fried my goroke for about 45 minutes or until they were nice and golden. Just like this one.
Having to add water. So far, this is the mix. It's kind of liquidy, but we have to do it like that so it doesn't absorb oil. But fingers crossed. After adding the water, the absolutely perfect tunagoroke mix was born. This one was not too thick, so it did not absorb too much oil. Now, there are so many different sauces that will go with koroke, but I went with this one. And if you have any Achinamoto or MSG, definitely put that in there. It will make it taste a whole lot better. finished the recipe so here is the final plate got the sauce the cucumbers and then i have the vegetable and then this is the tuna with water spinach <laughs> make sure to check the description box for the full recipe i went ahead and wrote everything down there so make sure to check that out if you have any comments or anything make sure to leave them down in the comment section below and of course make sure to check that mukbang show that it's right here that's the link Thank you all so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!